In the name of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our church service today on Sunday, Pentecost and Confirmation. I invite you to have a seat and thank you. And we celebrate together. You can also have a seat. I just would like to advise you in regards to our hymns and songs that um, they will be on our screens in English and some of them in German too, so both languages, but some are only in English. So if you prefer to sing in German, you will need our songbook. You can use our songbook and the number of the songs are, are there. So let's celebrate together with our first hymn. Um, which is 165 in our German songbooks and in English on our screens. Let us pray together with words of Psalm 118. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, from the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With both in hand, join in the festival procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is God. His love endures forever. Glory be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We pray, Almighty God, to you this morning that you bless us with your Holy Spirit. Come and fill, fill us and let us speak the words of encouragement, of love and truth. And let us find deep community and peace in the, your presence. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now we hear the two readings for this Sunday from the Gospel of John and Acts. Good morning. Our first reading is from John, chapter 14, the verses 15 to 17. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, who will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him or know him. But you know him because he remains with you and is in you. Our second reading is Acts chapter 2, the verses 1 to 13. When the day of Pentecost came, all the believers were gathered together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from the sky, which sounded like a strong wind blowing, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they saw what looked like tongues of fire, which spread out and touched each person there. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to talk in other languages, as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were Jews living in Jerusalem, religious people who had come from every country in the world. When they heard this noise, a large crowd gathered. They were all excited because all of them had heard the believers talking in their own languages. In amazement and wonder, they exclaimed, these people are talking like this, the people who are talking like this are Galileans. How is it then that all of us hear them speaking in our own native language? We are from Parthia, Media, and Elam, from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, from Pontus and Asia, from Phrygia and Pamphylia, from Egypt and the regions of Libya near Cyrene. Some of us are from Rome, both Jews and Gentiles converted to Judaism, and some of us are from Crete and Arabia. Yet all of us hear them speaking in our own languages about the great things God has done. Amazed and confused, they kept asking each other, what does this mean? But others made fun of the believers, saying, these people are drunk. We're now singing our next hymn, number 331 in the book, Großer Gott, wir loben dich.
Grace be with you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We celebrate Sunday Pentecost and Confirmation. I think they both the celebration have a strong connection. We just heard in the reading about the disciples gathering in Jerusalem, coming together, receiving the Holy Spirit, preaching the gospel of Jesus, and then, and then founding the first Christian congregation. And um, today we celebrate together, we pray that um, Hannah and Victoria are blessed and receive the Holy Spirit, and then they become members of uh, the congregation with, as we say, with full rights and responsibilities. After today, they will be able to be godparents, and um, they will be invited to um, celebrate in Holy Communion and be part of the congregation. But who is Hannah and Victoria? Many of you know Hannah and Victoria since they were little girls. I still want to invite them today that they introduce themselves and I will join them here up the front. Hannah, would you introduce yourself? We, we need to check the microphones. Are they on? That's on. And that's on too. Um, yes, it, it will work. Um, my name's Hannah. Um, I'm 13 years old and I go to Our Lady of the Sacred Heart College. Victoria? Um, I'm Victoria. I'm 13 years old and I go to Nazareth College. Thank you. And um, you are not alone today, isn't it? You are with family members. Do you have siblings, Hannah? Um, yeah, I've got a sister and a brother. Yes. Lucy and Jack. <laughs> they are here. And Victoria? Um, I have a little brother. His a little brother. And um, you like um, some sports. What do you do at school? What do you enjoy to do at school? You mentioned, Hannah, you... I like footy. Footy. And Victoria? Um, I do gymnastics. Gymnastics. Footy and gymnastics. And yesterday, the congregation, we were sitting here and um, trying to remember some moments and memories Hannah and Victoria had here at church. And uh, we, after thinking about that, we remembered quite a few different moments. Hannah, would you share one with us? I remember the Sunday school we had here. Yeah. And we used to have a candle that we would bring out. Mm -hmm. and, and they said we used to fight over the candle. <laughs> Who is carrying it? Yeah. Victoria? Um, when we were younger, we used to sit at the step just over there. Yeah. You used to sit yeah, up the front here. And watch the service from there. We remembered some of the Christmas Eve services they celebrated here at St. John's um, every year, um, the same but still different, and um, Hannah and Victoria had some important roles to play in those services, isn't it? Why? Um, we had like a little play, and um, I was an angel. Mm -hmm. And I played the Christmas star. An angel and the Christmas star. Yes. We were trying to remember perhaps something that no one knows. And I asked them yesterday, did you do something? You didn't tell anyone here at church. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there were more things. They mentioned just one. Um, I think it was me and Victoria, but we were on the playground and we jumped onto a step and it broke. <laughs> um, yeah. And then you, 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 you left it like that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but it, it got fixed. It got fixed. And now it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> During our confirmation time, which we started last year when 
we couldn't meet in person. And then afterwards, it was long and difficult to get together, yet still we had opportunity to meet each other online. Um, and um, once we had opportunity to meet a confirmist from the city church, which whom we spent a day here at St. John's, um, and uh, that's a picture um, from that meeting there where we spent some time. During this time, we tried to discover and to talk about different aspects of our Christian faith. And um, we were thinking, how can we explain best what, what, what's special or what's unique in the Lutheran Church? And um, we were talking about the Reformation and about this person here, about Martin Luther and the Reformation. And we thought that's a good way to explain um, some of our um, Christian beliefs. Who was this man? Um, he was born in Germany in 1483. And after surviving a violent storm, he vowed to become a monk. Mm -hmm. He lived in the city of Wittenberg and died in 1546. Died in 1546. And Martin Luther was daunted by one important question. How do I find a God whom I can love and who loves me? How can I find a God whom I can love and who loves me? And from there, Martin Luther was ceaselessly searching for an answer. And when finding it, a clashed with a current situation from that time um, of the church. With corruption and political conflicts. Yes, and, and why do they have corruption? What, what was the problem there? Um, the church raised money through practices like selling indulgences. Mm -hmm. One aspect, and the other problem? Um, the political conflict was against the kings and queens and the popes. Queens and queens and the popes. And then we learned that during that time, because of this reason, the Reformation wasn't sadly just a conversation. It ended in, in real conflict. In war. Martin Luther started the Reformation 1517 with one important publication. He, Luther criticized the church practices like selling indulgences. He wanted to begin a discussion within the church about the true path to salvation. He nailed his 95 theses or arguments to the door of the Wittenberg Cathedral for all to see. Mm -hmm. And and then his teaching about the justification of fa by faith alone was, had a central role. Um, the Bible is the only source of truth. Mm -hmm. People can read and understand the Bible themselves. Salvation comes only through faith in Christ. Salvation comes only through faith and not anything else. Well, that had consequences. Just a couple of years later... Um, we see this scene here, um, which was... Pope Leo X demanded that Luther recount his 50, 95 theses. Mm -hmm. Luther was brought before the deity of Worms, and in January 1521, Luther was excommunicated from the church. Yes. And, and, and then... Other important dates, we were thinking, how, how was he as a person? We heard he had six children but before as a monk how could that happen well this person had a role to play there um luther married katrina von bora on the 13th of june 1525 yes yes and another important date was was this scene here it was a little bit later 1530 which would mark more or less this um time of change in the, in the Reformation history. The deity of Augsburg in 1530 adopts the Augsburg Confession and found the Evangelical Church. Yes, so the deity from Augsburg where um, 
they presented a confession which described what the beliefs of the church are. So how can we, how can we summarize these beliefs? What, what, what are those in a short way? And a nice important symbol um, is Luther's seal. And by the way, I have some seals here with me. If you want one, uh, we will distribute one. It looks like this. Originally, it does not have the words in the circle, but the words in the circle, they describe four important aspects, the, the four sola, which are translated are alone by faith, alone by scripture, alone by, by the glory of God, and through Jesus Christ, we find salvation. And Luther summarizes this in, the, in, in, in all those different symbols we see in that seal there. What do they mean? We're talking about yesterday. The black cross in a heart retains its natural color so that I myself would be reminded that the faith in the crucified saves us. For one who believes from the heart will be justified. Although it is indeed a black cross which mortifies and which should also cause pain, it leaves the heart in its natural color. It does not corrupt in nature, that is, it does not kill but keeps alive. The just shall live by faith, but by the faith of the crucified. Mm -hmm. A white rose shows the faith, gives joy, comfort, and peace. In other words, it, give, it places the believer into a white, joyous rose, for the faith does not give peace and joy like the world gives. Mm -hmm. That is why the rose should be white and not red, for white is the color of the spirits and the angels. The sky blue field symbolizes that such joy in spirit and faith is the beginning of the heavenly future joy, which begins already but is grasped in hope not yet revealed. A golden ring. Around this field is a golden ring, symbolizing that it has blessedness in heaven lasts forever. It has no end. Such blessedness is exquisite, beyond all joys and goods, just as gold is the most valuable, most precious, and best metal. Thank you. Now we know what those mean. Like I said, after the service, if you like to take one with you, you're welcome to do so. Uh, a seal with all those different symbols expressing our faith according to the Bible and uh, our, our tradition. There would be, of course, many other things we could mention from the time of Reformation. Um, we thought these are um, something we, we easily can take with us and, and remember. I invite you that we sing together another song and then that we pray together for Hannah and Victoria.
by now all the elders to come forward and um, Victoria and Hannah if you would like to raise and our elders come forward You can, yes, come, come here, up, yeah. Maybe someone from go, goes on this side, yes. <laughs> I have two readings uh, this morning. The first one is, uh, das erste ist vom 1. Johannes, Kapitel 4, Vers 16. Und die in der Liebe leben, die leben in Gott, und Gott lebt in ihnen. And from Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Thank you. The faith in God is something we cannot obtain by good works, money, or by ourselves in general. It is always a gift we receive. Each day to live by it, by the love and grace of God. Our faith involves our whole lives, which is also a gift. And through the faith in God, we have reconciliation and we have community with Him and with each other. We pray for this by Faith by speaking together the Apostolic Creed, and I invite you that we speak this creed together. We will see it on our screens. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So, dear Confirmis, dear Hannah, dear Victoria, Christian, this Christian faith which we confess together in the Apostolic Creed is a foundation on which we can build our lives, this faith will sustain you and will give you hope and will make you strong and courageous. It will support you when life gets difficult. We invite you to stay in the Christian community, to hear God's word, to celebrate the communion and to take your Christian responsibility in our world serious and bring it out into your lives. So we ask you, I ask you, do you want to live your faith and your life in this faith? If so, answer yes with God's help. So help you God. Dear parents, dear Godparents, your children are now ready to make a new step in their lives as Christians and they go alone, further and further away from you. And we give them freedom where they need freedom, trust where trust is important, and encouragement in difficult times. I invite you to pray for your children as the congregation does pray for them. And you, the congregation, these young Christians are now members of the Christian church with 
all rights and responsibilities, they can now be godparents and celebrate Holy Communion. So I ask you to let them participate, be patient, encourage them, and be good brothers and sisters in faith as we all are children of God. Let us pray together for Hannah and Victoria. Almighty God, grant the gift of wisdom to see the world through your eyes, the gift of counsel to make difficult decisions, the gifts of knowledge and understanding to use our minds to know you and to love you, the gifts of fortitude to have the courage to live in faith despite the difficulties and disappointments. Give us the gift of piety to be able to express our love and commitment to you and the right kind of fear that makes our spouse to wonder and revere about your love. We pray, Lord, come and bless Hanam and Victoria. Amen. I invite you to come forward in the middle and face the altar. And I will speak to your blessing and I invite the elders that we bless together. Receive the Lord's blessing. Hannah, may the Almighty God bless you and keep you. May he be with you on all your ways, wherever you go now and forever. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Victoria. May the Almighty God bless you and keep you. May He make you strong and courageous. Don't be afraid of anything that lies ahead of you, because He will be with you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. With these words, we pray for you, and we say, welcome. Congratulations. God bless you. We have a small gift for you on behalf of our congregation, so you remember this day, um, and um, a certificate. And that certificate, we will have a look at it in a moment. Thank you, dear elders. Thank you very much. I invite you to take a seat and you have a seat too. And um, we need it for one moment. Some, um, if you would have a look on your uh, certificate, I would like to invite you that you read your Bible verse. That's this one here, yes. And the Bible verse. Um, it is our tradition to choose a Bible verse that's um, encouraging us on that specific moment. And perhaps later you'll have the opportunity to remember this verse. You know, sometimes when you don't know what to do, when you struggle, or when it's a good day, perhaps you remember the confirmation verse. Hannah, which one is yours? Um, Matthew 28. 20? Um, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Mm -hmm. And Victoria? Joshua um, 1, 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be, you, will be with you wherever you go. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's a blessing that both verses express and um, they are far apart, about a thousand years apart. Um, the one is from the book of um, Joshua and uh, the other one, Jesus is speaking to his disciples when he is taking leave of them. He encourages them with this verse. Don't be afraid. 
You don't know what lies ahead. You don't know what life brings. But be assured, you are not alone. You don't walk this path alone. And that's for me an important encouragement um, for not just for our confirmists, but for all of us, um, that God is prepared to walk at our side. He promises this in the Bible over and over, despite people forgetting that all the time. That's um, what the disciples experience, that's what Joshua experiences. Joshua has to lead the people of Israel into the promised land, but he's too young. It's like we would choose Victoria for that task, and she would say, no, 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 I'm too young, too inexperienced for such a big task. And, and God says, oh, well, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, be courageous and be strong. I will be at your side. And that happens in many different ways, but for sure one is through those who walk the path of life with us together. When we celebrate today the founding day of the Christian church, of community, then we celebrate that reminder that we are not walking that path alone, but with all those brothers and sisters who are at our side. For this we pray today, this morning. Amen. Let us sing another song. Confirmation is, as the word says, confirming something. And in confirmation, we confirm our um, baptism. That's what the next song will uh, talk about, sing about. <laughs> Now, before we celebrate together Holy Communion, I invite symbolically Hannah and Victoria to take a seat in with the family in our congregation. up the front here. Yeah, we can do that. 
<laughs> we have the following announcements to make this morning. Next week we invite on Wednesday at 10 a.m. to the craft group and Wednesday 8 p.m. in the evening to our English Bible study group. On Thursday, we invite to our Bible study group in German at 1 o'clock. And um, just a reminder for the elders, on Thursday, 7.30 p.m., sorry for the time, 7.30, uh, our elders meeting. Friday, we invite to our play group. And um, Saturday, we have a... Um, an outing to a native nursery in the Dandenongs, you receive more information at the exit if you like to register. We pray together, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is forever before you. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified me through your word and through my faith. Grant me this faith, Lord. And forgive me. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Is this also your confession, and do you desire God's forgiveness if so, answer, yes, may God forgive me. Yes, may God so I proclaim to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, he took the cup, the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Let us pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you that we come forward and that we celebrate communion. And I invite first the confirmees with their families and then the congregation. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Der Herr segne dich und behüte dich. Der Herr lasse leuchten sein Angesicht über dir und sei dir gnädig. Der Herr erhebe sein Angesicht auf dich und schenke dir Frieden. Amen. <lacht>